Welcome and thank you for joining us this afternoon for today's Lunch and Learn, Tobacco Cessation, Benefits, Methods, and How to Be Smoke-Free for Good. My name is Kathy Chern and I'm a Consumer Health Librarian at East Brunswick Public Library. Today's program is brought to you by St. Peter's University Hospital and the Libraries Just for the Health of It initiative to promote community health and wellness. Our speakers today are Denise Cosner and Robin Bergeron. Denise Cosner is a nurse practitioner and Robin Bergeron is a certified physician assistant specializing in pulmonary and sleep medicine. They are both members of the Division of Pulmonary Critical Care and Sleep Medicine at St. Peter's University Hospital in New Brunswick, New Jersey. They see patients independently and are passionate about assisting patients in quitting tobacco and ensuring eligible patients are screened for lung cancer. Please be aware that this talk is being recorded. The recording will be available at ebpl.org slash YouTube. If you have any questions, please type them into the chat box. Our speakers will answer questions at the end of the talk. Our speakers will not be able to offer medical advice to attendees during this program. And without further ado, I'll turn things over to Denise and Robin. Thanks, Kathy. We're just gonna share our screen here. Okay. All right. Great. All right. Well, um, thanks for the introduction, Kathy. Like you said, uh, my name's Robin. This is my colleague, Denise, and we work at St. Peter's and we do a lot with tobacco cessation or helping people quit um, tobacco. So today we just want to talk about that with you guys, talk about what we kind of do um, and obviously the benefits of quitting smoking. There we go. All right, so just a quick overview of what we'll be talking today. We have some facts for you um, about smoking from the CDC. We'll talk about, you know, what is even in a cigarette, the health and financial impact of smoking. Uh, Denise will be going over some treatment options, the benefits of quitting, um, and how quitting even just oh, 30 minutes after quitting uh, smoking can have an impact on your body positively. Uh, so re some resources for quitting smoking. And then um, like Kathy said at the end, we have time for questions if anybody is uh, curious about anything. So here are some scary statistics, I guess you can say from the CDC um, about cigarette smoking. I know we all kind of know smoking is bad, um, but we'll break it down just a little bit more, go into a little bit more detail today of why and uh, what it actually does to your body. But here you can see that smoking is the leading cause of preventable death uh, preventable disease and death in the United States. Smoking kills about half a million people, half a million Americans a year. Um, in 2019, an estimated over 34 million adults in the U.S. were current smokers. Um, unfortunately, on average, people that smoke die 10 years earlier than non-smokers. Cigarette smoking is the number one cause of lung cancer still, and more than 16 million Americans live with smoking-related disease, so not necessarily lung cancer, but some of the other diseases um, that we might talk about here later. So, um, like you can see the title of this slide, Cigarette Recipe, so what's even in a cigarette? Some of these things you might have never even heard of, uh, probably certainly things that you wouldn't want to be ingesting, like insecticide, um, toilet cleaner, paint, you know, rocket fuel, all of these things, carbon monoxide, you know, we have detectors in our home to make sure that we're not exposed, um, but when we smoke, uh, we are exposing ourselves to carbon monoxide, a dangerous poison. And you can see some of the other things, you know, poison, sewer gas, vinegar, lighter fluid, batteries, all of these things. There's nothing good in a cigarette. And all of these things are extremely detrimental to your health overall, to multiple organ systems, um, which we'll get into. So effects of smoking on your body, like I said, multiple organ systems, the entire body uh, is impacted. I think we're most familiar probably with the uh, impact on heart and lungs. So as you can see, heart disease, chest pain, stroke, high blood pressure, and then for the lungs, um, just, you know, these are to name a few, persistent cough and bronchitis, um, COPD, chronic obstructive lung disease. So when we're talking about, you know, the heart disease that can be caused by smoking, Smoking can cause a short and long-term increase in your heart rate and your blood pressure, and it reduces the flow of blood to your heart. It can cause changes in the surface of platelets, which are cells in your blood that um, 
work with for blood clotting. So if you have damage to these the surfaces, it can increase your risk of blood clots, which again can cause increased risk in heart attack and stroke. Uh, like I touched on before, carbon monoxide being in a cigarette, um, when you inhale carbon monoxide, it binds to a molecule called hemoglobin, which keeps oxygen from binding to hemoglobin and from being released to oxy oxygenate our bodies. So our tissues aren't gonna be getting oxygen which they need to be um, viable. So smoking can also cause inflammatory cells in the body to react as well. So chronic inflammation has many detriments throughout the body as well. Um, and with the lungs, you know, constant irritation um, with COPD or chronic obstructive lung disease, which we see primarily uh, in our smokers, which is irreversible lung disease, you get chronic inflammation, um, increase in the cells that create mucus throughout your airway, um, narrowing and reduction of the airways. And you can even get, you know, collapse of the airways because you are, uh, disrupting the and destroying the lung cells. So regarding eyes and skin, so this kind of comes down um, also as well to damage to blood vessels. So narrowing, hardening, blood not being able to flow through, oxygen, nutrients not being able to flow through. Um, you know, we often think what is cigarette, what are cigarettes doing to the inside of our body and the impact that they're having negatively for us. Um, and if that's not enough to, you know, keep you from smoking or want, making you want to quit, um, as far as how you look on the outside, smoking impacts that. So premature aging, poor wound healing. Um, like I said, the narrowing of the blood vessels keeps, you know, oxygen and nutrient rich blood from getting to our tissues. So that's going to keep us from being able to heal. That will lead to more scarring, um, uneven coloring across our skin and the chemicals in cigarettes, again, trigger some issues with inflammatory cells and can also, um, destroy collagen and elastin, which give our skin strength and elasticity. So leading to some sagging skin, um, as well. And then, you know, you see somebody smoking a cigarette, you have to purse your lips to smoke a cigarette. So that, uh, frequent, uh, wrinkling really in the skin actually becomes how your, your lips look all the time. Like they're always pursed. So you'll see those fine lines, um, around a smoker's mouth as well. In regards to our GI tract or gastrointestinal tract, um, which starts in the mouth, you know, you're smoking, yellow teeth, gum disease, bad breath, stomach ulcers, and some issues um, impact on the pancreas as well. So the, the tar, the tobacco staining the teeth as it comes into your mouth, uh, gum disease, again, once you, if you can't get oxygen and nutrient rich blood uh, to the gums, some disease coming from that, uh, which can cause uh, tooth loss as well. And then we know what it smells like to smoke. Of course, bad breath comes along with that. Um, and then in regards to the pancreas, those who smoke are 30 to 40% more likely to develop diabetes type two. And the more you smoke, the higher your risk is for developing diabetes. And if you smoke when you're trying to manage diabetes, it makes managing the diabetes um, harder. So, and if you smoke and have diabetes, you're more likely to have heart issues, kidney issues, eye disease, um, damage to the nerves and blood vessels, which again can lead to pain, weakness, and poor circulation. So a whole lot of stuff going on there. And then, you know, to talk about reproduction and pregnancy as well. So if, you know, it's hard to quit just thinking of yourself, you know, if you are pregnant or around people that are pregnant, um, you know, thinking about the implications for the fetus as well. So uh, women who smoke during pregnancy are more likely to have babies that have a low birth weight, um, more likely to go into preterm labor. So before you know, the 40 weeks, um, more likely to have stillbirths, unfortunately, and an increased risk for their baby after delivery to have um, sudden infant death syndrome. Um, in women who smoke during their pregnancy and who smoke around their kids as well. Um, this can also lead to issues with the placenta while the baby's developing um, and increased risk for the fetus or the child to have uh, mouth and lip disease like a cleft palate. So children who are also exposed to secondhand smoke once outside of the womb are more likely to have respiratory infections, more severe asthma, um, and de lung leaf, um, delayed lung growth as well. So, you know, we ought, like I said, we often think about uh, cigarette smoking and the impact it has on our lungs um, and always thinking about lung cancer, but that's not the only risk. Like I said, it impacts your whole entire body and it actually causes um, increased risk of cancer throughout the body. So as you can see here, just multiple organ systems highlighted to show that it's not just the lungs, um, you know, you've reproductive organs, stomach, pancreas, GI tract, uh, you know, really everything can be impacted through smoking. So just further benefit in quitting. 
Um, so I think my last slide here, money talks, right? So if you're not motivated by health, maybe the money, um, the financial aspect will kind of uh, trip your trigger. So um, the average cost of a pack of cigarettes in New Jersey is just under $8. So some higher, some lower, depending on uh, which type of cigarette a person smokes. So over a month, if you're smoking a pack a day, you're looking at $230. Um, over a year, you're looking at almost $3,000. So really think about the money that you could save from reducing um, or completely quitting smoking, um, not to mention the, the healthcare uh, money aspect. So, you know, smoking related illness in the U S costs us more than $30 billion a year. So if we didn't have these costs, you know, think what we could be doing with that money as well. Um, so I will turn it over to Denise now to talk about some treatment options and some kind of things that we do in the clinic to help people that are smoking. Hello, I'm Denise. So I'm going to just go through a couple slides about treatment options and um, what we can do for you. So we had Robin speak about the scary things about smoking, why we want to quit smoking, the effects it can have on your, your whole entire body. So we're going to talk about different treatment options, starting with nicotine replacement and also non-nicotine replacement. So as you can see listed here, there's quite a bit of options and I'll go through each one. So we'll be able to at least have a little snapshot of things that we can help offer you to stop smoking. So nicotine withdrawal. So why people don't want to stop smoking. So a lot of people say, oh, it's going to, you know, I'm going to have a lot of effects of withdrawing from cigarettes and from nicotine, including depression, irritability, insomnia, anxiety. I'm just going to be miserable because I can't smoke. Um, also people say, oh, you know, um, the cost of even using some of these other um, nicotine replacement therapies and non-nicotine re replacement therapies, maybe they can't afford it. I'll talk to that at the end of what we can do to help you get some of these, but still, as Robin said, it might offset anyway, because smoking cigarettes are just very expensive anyway. In general though, the goal of these treatment options to help you stop is to also help reduce the withdrawal symptoms, reducing the cravings. So hoping to eliminate the irritability, mood, frustration, anxiety, everything that can come with trying to quit smoking. This is also why we tell people not to quit cold turkey because you will have these symptoms. It will be harder and you will relapse. So we have things that can help you be actually successful to stop smoking and to get your health back on track. So the first thing I'll talk about is <clears throat> nicotine patch. This is like gold standard. People all over see this over the counter. Um, you can get this medication. So what's good about the nicotine patch is we say it's set it and forget it. Um, you apply it to your skin. It's lasting for 24 hours. You can put it on your arm, your chest, upper arm, thigh. You can kind of move it around a little bit. Pretty easy. Um, but some disadvantages is that it's passive. A lot of people have, um, have a habit of smoking and you want to have a mouth to lip type of kind of habit. So this isn't going to really help you in that situation. Um, we'll talk about some other therapies that can help for that. And um, sometimes you can have some skin irritation, which is why it's good that you can move it all around your body. So maybe you wouldn't have that problem. Also smoking on the people say smoking on the patch causes chest pain, heart attack and stroke. That's just a myth. Um, nicotine patch is giving you nicotine, which you're already getting in cigarettes as well. So it should not cause any other heart attack, any stroke, things like that. Um, so that is definitely a myth and you can, you know, we would advise you not to smoke when you're using the patch, but if you have a slip up, you know, it's not going to cause you to have a heart attack. The next is the nicotine gum. So this is um, oral absorption. It's also, you can use it over the counter. Um, this is nice because it can be used as needed. If you're having a craving that's hitting, um, you need to use it anytime in the car, at home, at work. You could just use this right away. Some disadvantages people say they have some jaw pain, nausea. They don't like the taste. The gum has a peppery taste to it. So I know there's a lot of flavors you can get, but still it has like a peppery essence to it. So, you know, some people don't really like that. 
And then we have the lozenge also kind of goes along with the nicotine gum, very easy to use. You could pop it at any time, again, at work, in the car, at home. Um, you can't really eat or drink when you're using this. And again, some people really don't like the taste of this. This is also an over-the-counter medication. So this, now we're going into a little bit of a prescription. So um, one of the prescriptions that we have here is the nicotine inhaler. We call it an inhaler, but it's actually orally absorbed. It's not an inhaler someone would take, like if you're taking an asthma medication where you're inhaling it into the lungs, it's actually used as, we call it a puffer. You take an inhalation in and it gets orally absorbed. So even though it's called an inhaler, it really gets absorbed the oral mucosa. So this is also an as needed. And this is one of the medications that is good for people that have an or oral to hand behavior. So this actually resembles smoking. Um, if you, you know, need to kind of mimic that smoking, this will do it. Some people can have throat irritation or a cough. Um, and then the good thing about this is it uh, comes in a little package, each, each, um, cartridge is about one cigarette worth of nicotine. So you can go through a bunch of cartridges and um, this is by prescription only. Then we have the nasal spray. This is also prescription only, and this is the fastest working medication. So if you're a person that smokes first thing in the morning, absolutely needs to have a cigarette right away, this has the most rapid um, onset and the fastest delivery. So this might be something for you to use. Some people can have nasal irritation when using this or chronic sinus, or chronic, um, sinus problems or um, like runny nose, things of that nature. So now non-nicotine replacements. Those are all of our medications that have nicotine inside of them. Um, so we're actually going to be giving the nicotine that you would be lacking in a cigarette. So now we have medication management that can also help. So one of them is called bupropion, or it's also called Zyban or Wellbutrin. Um, people classify it in as like an antidepressant medication, but it is also used for quitting smoking and studies have shown it can be very successful to help people quit stop smoking. Um, for this medication, you would use, you know, um, you would just take it twice a day or once a day, depending on how your prescriber would order it for you. Um, you could take it for seven to 12 weeks or longer. Some side effects increase heart rate, sweating, nervousness, waist loss, insomnia. You know, when we talk about, just on a side note, we talk about side effects for medications and also nicotine replacement. You know, some of these are also side effects of withdrawal. We're going to be trying to stop those symptoms as much as we can, but some of these also just go with also stopping smoking. So that's why, you know, your provider, or I'll get to the end of how we can help you as well, help you kind of get through these types of things, either weaning off easily or um, using other kinds of medications to help with some side effects or withdrawal symptoms. All right. And the next one, which I know a lot of people has probably heard of is Chantex. It got a lot of um, kind of hype not good always because, you know, people have heard kind of major side effects with Chantex, but this medication has been studied to be very, very successful with helping people quit smoking. Um, duration can be 12 to 24 weeks, um, starting a quit date, working with your provider to do that. Um, they have, you know, you could have a starter pack and then move on to a maintenance pack. This is also a prescription. Some side effects are nausea, insomnia, vivid dreams. So this is kind of what's been um, the hype about Chantex is that there was a black box warning for Chantex. Um, people were um, um, reporting some psychiatric symptoms, some suicide ideations, agitation, mood swings, um, things like that. So this was so the black box warning came in 2007 and it was till 2017 because during this time they were really studying the um, the report, these reported behaviors, and if it was really significant, if it was really related to this medication. So since then, multiple studies have shown that there was no significant increase in depressive, psychotic, or suicide behaviors. Again, depression is a withdrawal symptom of nicotine. However, as you see, there's a lot of other options besides Chantex, though it is a very successful medication. So working with your provider, if you have a history of depression or have a history of psychiatric um, type of um, conditions, then maybe using something else would be best for you. But the black box warning was removed in 2017. So in general, you know, there's 
nicotine replacement therapy is a wonderful thing. There's no significant safety concerns with using more than one as well. Um, you know, you're already getting nicotine when you're smoking. So using the patch along with the gum is not going to hurt you in any way, um, even using a cigarette. So that's why we tell people if you slip up and you smoke while using some nicotine replacement therapy, don't stop using it. Don't give up, keep going. And you know, you will have slip ups here and there. And that's what your providers, or I'll tell you at the end, some um, resources you can use to help you kind of get through it. Um, all nicotine replacement therapy should be used the length of time that your provider schedules for you. Um, but some are used longer and most of the time it's very safe to use them for a longer period of time and always contact your health provider if you know you feel like you need to use it longer or switch or anything like that. So optimal therapy. So optimal therapy is medication plus behavioral therapy. Um, this is an addiction, you know, cigarette smoking is an addiction and counseling, group counseling, working closely with family members, providers to just give that extra support to help you stop smoking is very important along with medication that we can offer you too. And this is also great news because insurance does help to cover this. So Medicare Part B covers two smoking cessation counseling attempt per year. And each attempt includes four face-to-face -face sessions for a total of eight sessions. So insurance is catching up with the fact that we really want people to stop smoking for your own health, for, as Robin said, for save the, the health care, you know, the healthcare organization's money as well, and really keep people just living healthier lives without needing to be hospitalized or needing extra medications to treat COPD, cancers, all that kind of stuff. And the FDA approved nicotine replacement therapies, which we talked about, are normally covered through Medicaid plans as well. So Medicaid, Medicare and Medicaid, and some commercial insurances as well, depending on what you're ordered. The New Jersey quit line will supply six weeks of um, nicotine replacement therapy if the products are available. And over-the-counter treatments for smoking um, sometimes are not covered by Medicare, but they may cover certain prescription drugs. So that's why it's nice that there's a very large range of medications we can use, prescription medications and non-prescription medications, because if by some chance insurance doesn't cover it or it's too expensive, we can maybe switch to something else that would be covered or would be less cost costly for the patient. And the benefits to quitting. So this is really what it's all about. So already within 20 minutes of stopping smoking, your heart rate and blood pressure drop. In two to 12 weeks, circulation improves, lung function increases, you will go on to one to nine months, coughing, shortness of breath decreases, um, you know, then you are going on to your risk of stroke reduces in five to 15 years, coronary artery disease, high blood pressure. I mean, the, the, the benefits are endless and it really just will help your quality of life. It also, the people around you will benefit from it too. You know, secondhand smoke or again, kids that are around smoking I and mean, benefits are really great to yourself and also to family as well. So resources and what we can offer you. So the New Jersey quit line is always available. The number is here for everybody that need that that can use it. Um, they can help answer questions, refer, anything like that. The American Lung Association, American Cancer Society all have online um, resources available, ways to quit, um, you know, information, guides, things of that nature. And then around here, we have the Rutgers Tobacco Dependence Program. Their number is listed here. They have an intensive program. Um, they were doing a lot of virtual during COVID, but I, I they think they might be back in session now, um, offering counseling, group counseling, individual counseling, and also offering providers to prescribe um, medication that you can't get over the counter and financial assistance as well. And here at St. Peter's, we're also offering that too. So myself and Robin are providers that we can prescribe medication. We're offering um, telemedicine Actually, I think we're on the next slide. I'm sorry. So this is what St. Peter's Tobacco uh, Program can offer. So we do telemedicine appointments with myself and Robin. It's going to be a focused uh, visit, just directing on really getting into how we can help you stop smoking and be successful. Our goal is for you to stop, but also continue to stop and be successful and be smoke free. Um, so we have a partnership with Screen NJ, so we can. Um, 
also offer free nicotine replacement therapy and some financial assistance just in case insurance doesn't allow it, or if you are uninsured or anything like that, we can help to kind of give you these products because we know that these products are successful. Again, you know, you might've heard people quitting, quit cold Turkey, but we don't really recommend that because there are so many things that can help people be very successful quitting. And we can, we can help you with that. So we want you to kick the habit for good. So we can, it, our phone number's here to make an appointment, um, to help you be smoke free. So now we open it up to any questions or anything, if anybody has any. All right, so if anyone has any questions, you could type them into the chat box. So I guess there are no questions coming through right now. <laughs> All right, so since there are no questions, I guess that's it. So thank oh. you. Oh. oh the survey oh oh yes so there is a survey um that you can fill out um regarding the lecture so we'll include the link to the survey to um on the youtube channel okay. all right thank you all right, thank yeah you. thanks so much kathy for having us and um let us know if anybody reaches out with any questions or if we can help in any way all right, all right thank you so much denise uh, thank you for all right thanks a lot. Bye. take care okay. Thank you, everyone. Take care.